Welcome to Cancer Lesson 2.3, How Do Cells Act as Part of a Community and Become Isolated in Cancer? The goals of this lesson are to introduce how cells control cell division by signaling between each other, using the example of wound healing, and explore how a cell sends signaling information to the nucleus so it can control the cell cycle. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to explain how the extracellular signals that promote or block cell proliferation cooperate to regulate wound healing. Describe the function of the main components in a cell signaling cascade, extracellular signal, receptor, transduction proteins, and transcription factor. Predict the effects of mutating a cell signaling cascade on cell growth and death in wounded tissue. We will achieve these goals by engaging in a Socratic discussion and a computer simulation of a cell signaling pathway. To prepare for this lesson, you'll need to review the following key scientific concepts that will be presented throughout the lesson. Cells communicate with each other through signals called ligands that attach to a specific receptor on the recipient cell's surface, like a key into a lock. Information from the receptor is transmitted into the cell via a chain reaction called a signaling cascade. As a result of the signaling cascade, the recipient cell can respond to the signal from the other cell by controlling its cell division. You can review the scientific content in the background reading provided for you in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. The teacher primer provides in-depth knowledge about the scientific content presented in this lesson. The teacher manual or lesson plan provides a minute-by-minute -minute explanation of the lesson structure. The student workbook provides additional explanation for students. Be sure to print the lesson worksheet and the homework worksheet. You will also need to get access to the computer simulation on cell signaling. Contact CTSE to get a username and password to the Cell Collective. Access can be found in the document titled Teacher Simulation Instructions. The key points of the do now are that when tissue is wounded, damaged cells die and normal cells replicate. Once the damaged cells have been replaced, the cells must stop replicating. Signals to stop the cells replicating are as essential to normal healing as the signals that start cells replicating. In the do now, students consider what occurs when they get a scrape or cut. This prompts a discussion on what happens to skin cells as the wound heals. The closer we look at this process, the more we see that the community of cells must coordinate both when cells will start to replicate and when cells will stop replicating. This coordination requires communication between the cells. So how does this communication happen? In the discussion, the control of cell proliferation will be framed in the context of the cell cycle. The key points of the discussion are, when a ligand attaches to a receptor, it sets off a chain reaction in the recipient cell called a signaling cascade that transmits information to the nucleus. In the nucleus, the chain reaction switches on transcription of the genes for driver or checkpoint proteins. In this way, external signals can tell the cell when to start or stop dividing. Signals from the environment attach to receptors, which are usually located on the outside of the cell. Each ligand has a different receptor. Once the ligand has attached to its receptor, the receptor becomes active and able to transmit the information from the signal to the nucleus. The end stage of the chain reaction in the nucleus is to switch on transcription of the genes involved in regulating cell division. These switches are called transcription factors. GO signals to stimulate cell division will switch on transcription factors for cell cycle driver proteins. STOP signals inhibit cell division by switching on transcription factors for checkpoint genes, leading to more checkpoint proteins. Next, we take a closer look at the chain reaction in stromal cells inside of a wound. In wound healing, the GO signal is a substance called platelet-derived growth factor, or PDGF. As its name suggests, PDGF is a ligand made by the platelets that have migrated into the wound. First, 
PDGF attaches to its receptor on a stromal cell. Next, the PDGF receptor becomes active and sets up a chain reaction inside the cell. First, the receptor activates a transduction protein that carries the signal from the receptor into the cell. In turn, the transduction protein activates a transcription factor, which travels into the nucleus, where it will switch on the G1 driver gene to make G1 driver proteins. Other cells in a tissue use different growth factors that work in different ways. For example, the parenchyma cells usually use the ligand Wnt as a go signal. In this case, the chain reaction works a bit differently. In the absence of a Wnt signal, the transduction protein is attached to the Wnt transcription factor, blocking it. So the role of the chain reaction is to remove the transduction protein from the Wnt transcription factor. Wnt signals to the transduction protein through its receptor on the epithelial cell to move off the Wnt transcription factor. Now the Wnt transcription factor is free to switch on the G1 driver gene. Cells use different and sometimes complex signaling strategies because many of these signaling pathways are linked to each other. But how does the epithelium know when to stop proliferating once enough cells are made to heal the wound? Cells can sense the presence of other cells, so once the number of cells has returned to normal, cells tell each other to stop dividing. Here, two cells have come into contact with each other. Each cell has cell contact receptors that can attach to each other. This attachment sets up a chain reaction in the cells, just as we saw before. In this chain reaction, the role of the transduction protein is to act as a stop signal to block the G1 driver transcription factor so it can no longer switch on transcription of the G1 driver gene. No more G1 driver protein is made and the cell cannot pass out of G1, so cell division stops. Note that this is a different kind of stop signal than the checkpoint proteins. This lesson's activity is a computer simulation to demonstrate how signaling cascades are used to regulate the cell cycle. The example used is the cell contact pathway stimulated by Wnt. The cell contact receptor involved is called cadherin. The key points of the activity are that mutations in any of the chain reaction proteins can potentially prevent control of cell division, leading to hyperproliferation. There are two ways to stop a cell cycle. One is by the absence of GO signals, and another way is by a stop signal that switches on a transcription factor for a checkpoint gene. Transcription factors for driver and checkpoint genes are all different and specific for specific genes. It may be more effective for you to run the simulation software as a demo for the students while having them predict the outcomes and record observations on their worksheets. There is a detailed instruction sheet provided in the materials folder. The key points of the wrap-up are that cells normally stop dividing once they contact each other. But cells will not know to stop dividing if the contact signal is not provided or recognized. Cells can hyperproliferate because they don't know to stop dividing as well as because division is uncontrolled. Normally, the number of cells remains constant in a tissue because a cell only divides when another cell dies, so the growth and death ratios are the same. This is because of contact inhibition. In the healing tissue graph, the growth and death ratio are the same at first, but when the tissue is damaged, the growth ratio is greater than the death ratio because the cells are dividing. Eventually, when the tissue is repaired and contact inhibition occurs, growth and death will become equivalent. But in tumor tissue, cells do not send or recognize contact inhibition signals, and so they don't realize that there are enough cells present, and they continue to divide as though they are healing a wound, even though they are not damaged. Failure of the contact inhibition signaling pathway is a common cause of hyperproliferation that gives rise to tumors. Mutations in key genes or pathways that interact with key genes can ultimately lead to hyperproliferation. 
we take a closer look at the following mutations in proto-oncogenes and in tumor suppressors, which can lead to hyperproliferation. A key point is that the mutation doesn't necessarily need to be in the gene. A mutation in any pathway that leads to overactive driver genes or underactive tumor suppressors will lead a cell to hyperproliferate. Only a few key mutations in a signaling cascade that controls cell division can lead to hyperproliferation, the first stage of cancer formation. For homework, students will read a short article about how cancer takes advantage of the wound healing process to spread to other parts of the body. One of the most common questions students ask is why is having more cadherin molecules than normal on the surface of a cell not enough to stop cell proliferation? For proliferation to stop, cadherin molecules need to physically contact another cadherin molecule on another cell. This starts the signaling that stops proliferation. Another question students ask is why are only a few key mutations needed to cause cancer? Think of it like the U.S. air transportation system. A few airports act as major hubs. A non-functioning hub will have a greater effect on the whole system than one small feeder airport. At the end of the lesson, collect the lesson worksheets to assess students' predictions of the effects of mutating a cell signaling cascade. In this lesson, we learned about how cells communicate to regulate when to divide. Next, we will learn how these signals can be adversely affected in cancer. Don't forget if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback to let us know. You can contact any of the CTSE team members and we'll be happy to help you.